Hey guys, my name is Haley, and today I'm going to be filming a recently watched, which is a thing I want to start on my channel of because I have suddenly gotten in the mood to watch TV that is not Doctor Who, <laughs> which is basically all I started with last fall. And obviously we all have more time on our hands with the pandemic and everything, so this will not be the norm, but I did binge all of these shows in like a week besides the first one, which I had started previously, but I basically binged all of them while I was house sitting. I got zero reading done, but again, we're letting ourselves do what we feel like doing so we can keep our mental health okay during this pandemic as we are now on the year anniversary. I think it's literally the anniversary of pandemic status today as I'm filming this. So the first thing is a rewatch because I had seen the vast majority of it but had never seen the last season and that is Sherlock. I love this show. It has always been one of my top three favorite shows like for literal years now. I think I got into it as Reichenbach Fall came out. So I watched the third season as it came out and then never watched the fourth one. So I was rewatching them in order to watch the fourth season to get the full effect. <laughs> so I rewatched it. Jim Moriarty might be my favorite villain of all time, of anything ever, books, movies, TV, anything. I adore him. <laughs> He's like my favorite type of like genuinely crazy psychopath character, which makes him the perfect villain because there's no reasoning with him. So my favorite episode of Sherlock, like I feel like most people's is Reichenbach Fall, which is the finale, the very dramatic finale to season two. I'm also like a pretty big fan of season three. Like if I had to rank them, I would go like season two, season three, and like parts of season one and four would be somewhere in there. I do like the addition of the new character in season three because we've had the same cast of characters for so long at that point. And I remember liking her beforehand when I watched it as it was coming out. And then season four started off really well. I really liked the first episode. The second episode was like kind of okay. And then the third one was the most bizarre episode of Sherlock of my life. I thought I was watching an action movie, but because I'm so invested in the characters, I was also down for it. Like I was perfectly fine with it. Probably one of the most stressful episodes of television I've ever seen and only because I care about all of those characters so much. If I had to like give a list of my favorite characters in Sherlock <laughs> would obviously be Jim Moriarty, probably Sherlock. Sherlock and Watson I feel like are just givens but as far as the side characters go. I love Lestrade. I don't know why I've always liked him <laughs> and I love Mycroft so much. So so much. <laughs> I find them both absolutely so endearing as characters, even though we don't see a ton of them compared to like Sherlock and John. There was also an addition of a new character in season four that I don't know how I feel about. It was not my favorite plot twist, but like I was fine with it by the time it was being used as a plot device later on in the series. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Sherlock. I was so excited to rewatch it. <laughs> And it still stands the test of time as one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Next up, I watched Good Omens. I tried to read this book several years ago and didn't care for it. I DNF'd it within like less than 100 pages for sure. But I knew they were adapting it to television and I was like, oh, I don't know about that. Like, I didn't like the book. I don't know why I would watch the TV show. And then I found out David Tennant was going to be in it. And I went, I'm going to end up watching that eventually <laughs> because if you didn't know, I feel like I've said it before, if you know, have heard me talk about Doctor Who, you know this, David Tennant is my favorite actor, like, of anything ever of all time. So I try to watch everything that he's in, <laughs> even when it's something that I don't really care for. And I thought the show was fine. It's very short. There's like six episodes and they're all an hour, hour or so long. So I literally binged it in a day when I did nothing else. <laughs> and I do think it's a fun story. It's not my favorite like plot line. It basically follows an angel and a demon from the beginning of time in the Garden of Eden all the way to the apocalypse. And they are essentially trying to prevent the end times by getting rid of the Antichrist, which is a little boy. And they mess it up and chaos ensues. I thought it was really fun. I really loved David's character. I don't know if that's just because I love David and everything that he does, but I really liked Crawley. I also have never, I don't think I've ever seen Michael Sheen in anything and he plays the angel character. And it made me like him as an actor a lot more so I might check out other things that he's in. If you know anything about Michael Sheen and anything that he's in, please let me know because I did really enjoy them, both of them in the show, even if the premise was not my favorite. And then next up, 
I started my first K-drama. It's been a long time coming. I've been saying I'm gonna start K-dramas for forever and I finally just binged one in two days and that was Abyss. I don't think this is a popular K-drama at all but the way to make me watch things is to make it sci-fi. <laughs> so Kate watched this a couple months ago and she said it would be a perfect first K-drama because it's very fun, it's very fast-paced, and it's sci-fi. And the, again, the way to make, make me watch things is sci-fi, is to make it sci-fi in some way. Because I'm not a huge fan of contemporary anything, like books, movies, TV shows, not normally my thing. I normally get bored very quickly after like a season or so. There are very, very few contemporary shows that I have ever finished. I think the only one I have ever finished was probably Glee. And I did finish Friends, but it's not my favorite thing of all time. So Abyss is this guy in the act of committing suicide to jump off a building and he gets knocked out of falling. And these two random people slash creatures give him this thing called an Abyss and tell him to go back to his life, but his face has changed. And what the Abyss does is make your out outer appearance match your soul. So if you're a good person, you will probably be very attractive, essentially, is the idea. He also finds out you can bring people left back to life with this abyss, but he doesn't really know how to use it, and that's where most of the problems happen. Because he uses it very early on to bring back someone he probably shouldn't have. <laughs> it was so fast-paced, I'm not gonna lie. I really liked the abyss idea, I liked the way it played out, but my favorite thing about the show was the couple. Like, I know that K-dramas have, like, always have some sort of romance. But this romance was perfectly paced. It was so cute. I loved them together. <laughs> I really want to watch both of these actors in other things because I loved both of them. There was also a second male lead that I really liked that I would love to watch in other things and this essentially just made me really excited for Korean actors. <laughs> so I have several K-dramas on my list. I will probably talk about those in future videos. I think the next one I'm going to try is Because This Is My First Life which is one that Kate just read that she compared to the flat share so that's probably the next one I'm going to try and I'm also planning on watching Goblin because that's what everybody screams about as their favorite K-drama. <laughs> and then last but not least, if you saw the title of this video, this is probably what you actually want to hear me talk about. <laughs> and I finished WandaVision, which ended last Friday, I believe. And I binged the first six, six episodes? How many are there? Eight? I for binged the first couple episodes all at once in one day because they're, they start off as like 20 minutes long and then like really long credit scenes and then slowly get longer and longer as the series goes on. And like for the first two and a half episodes I was like what is this? Am I gonna like this? I'm not sure. And then we hit like little hints at plot twists about three or four episodes in and I was hooked and bitches the rest of it watched the last two the moment they came out on the Friday. And it was so fun. It was really nice to be back in the Marvel Universe. It's been so long. Like, I haven't seen anything Marvel since Endgame came out. I've been keeping up with the Marvel movies since, like, sometime after the first Avengers movie came out. I watched the Avengers, went back and watched all the movies that were out at that time, and have been keeping up ever since. And I have seen everything minus, like, two random movies that are not super essential to the plotline <laughs> of, like, the Avengers movies. I love them. My favorite... Avengers, if you would like to know, are Tony Stark, Doctor Strange, and then I love Hawkeye and I love Bruce Banner. That's my, like, <laughs> top four. But for WandaVision, Wanda is not a character that I've really loved and I feel like that was the case for a lot of people because she's a little too overpowered for my taste and, like, characters that I really enjoy. And it's also because she doesn't understand her powers, so I don't understand her powers or what she can do. I just know she has a lot of power. And that's not my favorite thing, especially when we don't learn a ton about her. And I feel like we haven't in a lot of the Avengers movies. But what this definitely, I like, it definitely made me care more about her and Elizabeth Olsen as an actress. But this made me fall in love with Vision and made me want to rewatch the movies that he was in. Because, like, I do remember Vision. I know how he came to be, like, and I know that he died before, like, during one of the Avengers movies. I never really cared for him, like his death I don't think was super dramatic to me and this show made me care about him so much more and makes me made me love this actor. Like I absolutely love the way it was portrayed. I also really loved the sitcom series. Like we started off in like the 60s and like they would do intros because Wanda essentially creates her own show and is like living in this bubble and so you go through like the timeline of like the 60s and onward of 
different TV sitcoms and it was so interesting to watch happen when they were like as the further they went of old shows that would like they would make the same setup of a show that I watched as a kid and it was really fun to watch happen as these episodes went on and I was really sad when that ended because that was probably the, one of my favorite things about the show. <laughs> this ending wasn't really my favorite thing. It did get me really excited for the next Marvel movie which I believe is Doctor Strange 2 which is going to be the most anticipated thing of my life because Doctor Strange obviously is my second favorite Avenger. <laughs> it's probably because it's Benedict Cumberbatch but also his movie is probably one of the most interesting ones to me. I really liked WandaVision. I really liked how hyped it made me for more Marvel content because it's been a while since I've like really been in that world and it really made me want to rewatch at least all of the Avengers movies if not the entirety of Marvel's backlog. <laughs> And yeah, that's all I've been watching. I will just throw it in there now. The next show I'm going to rewatch is Supernatural. I have restarted. I've made it through season one. And there's a lot I forgot about the show, but there's 15 seasons. So this is going to take a while. I'm definitely going to break them up into like seasons one through five and then six through ten and then eleven through fifteen. Or I'll be here forever trying to watch Supernatural because <laughs> there's like 22 episodes a season and there's 15 seasons that will take a million years. But I have started my rewatch of that as well. That's everything I have watched in really the last two or so weeks. <laughs> and again, I don't know how often these are going to happen. It's kind of going to depend on how often and how much time I have to rewatch things and how fast I get through them and if I ever read again. <laughs> but let me know what you've been watching down below. Thank you all for watching and I will see all of you guys next time.